<clears throat> a, a an erotica by Salad Dog. Homestar walked in slowly into Marzipan's household. The doors were left ajar, and the night was at it sick. He felt a tremble down his spine. The room was cold and gray. He walked over to the couch and slowly sat down and crossed his legs. He was tired from today. His troubles were lost in the couch. It was incredibly comfy. He sank down and felt relieved. He assumed Marzipan would come downstairs and make him a tall glass of melonade, but his assumptions were incorrect. Marzipan, where art thou, whilst thy make Thou a tossed glass of melonettes, exclaimed Homestar, excited for what was not to come. Marzipan, I am seriously thirsty, said Homestar. He was growing impatient. A creak was heard from upstairs. Homestar shifted his eyes, wondering what was up there. It was not Marzipan, the shadows did not lie. He had a small sense of who it was. It was Bubs. Bubs crept down the stairs, glaring pensively at Homestar. Homestar was still in shock how Bubs got in Marzipan's household. Homestar's trembling spine only trembled worse, as Bubs slowly inched over to him. Good day, Homestar, how's it going? Bubs asked curiously. Bubs sat himself all fully close to Homestar and had full eye contact with him. Bubs, what the heck are you doing here? Where's Marzipan? How did you get in here? Homestar questioned Bubs feverishly. Oh, I just wanted to visit Marzipan. Just wanted to say hi, Bubs replied nervously. Homestar had his doubts. Normally, Marzipan would have been downstairs to greet Homestar and give him his melonade, but this was not the case. How's she doing then, Bubs? Homestar asked. She's, uh, doing, uh, she's sleeping, Bubs replied, more nor nervous than before. Homestar knew something was up. It was dark, but it was only six o'clock, which is the normal time of Marzipan's night gardening, and she was not outside gardening. No, seriously, Bubs, where is she? Homestar replied, slowly and inching, slowly inching away from Bubs' outstretched arm. Don't worry, Homestar, I'm here. Bubs replied, trying to comfort Homestar. It wasn't working. Homestar may be stupid, but he knows when someone is lying. Homestar jumped from the couch in very sudden fashion. Where is Marzipan? he exclaimed, pronouncing his R's in a fit of anger and impatience. He knew that something was going on, and his concern was ongrowing. I know what I must do. I am telling Pom Pom he'll bust your sweet butt in jail, Mr. Homestar stated proudly. Homestar made a mad dash for the door. Bubs threw himself at the door, shutting it firmly and locking it. Homestar stopped in his tracks, curious of what to do next. Bubs tackled him to the ground, holding Homestar's body with both hands. His sweaty palms worked furiously to handcuff Homestar's leg to the table. Despite Bubs tackled him to the ground, holding Homestar's body with both hands, his sweaty palms worked furiously to handcuff Homestar's legs to the table. Despite Homestar's athleticism, he was no match for Bub's determination and burliness. <gasps> Homestar thrashed around, hoping to free himself from Bub's grasp in the handcuffs' grasp. Bubs, what are you doing? This is crazy, Homestar screamed, panicking for any help. However, help is not to arrive. Bubs was eyeing pensively at Homestar, knowing that he had full control over Homestar's body. This thought of full control <laughs> excited him, or he ripped a hole in Homestar's shirt. Bub, stop, that's my star, Homestar cried, mourning at the loss of his star. Bub salivated all over Homestar's face, his excitement was throbbing and out of control. Homestar shut his eyes and thrashed his head around, trying to knock Bubs off himself. But Bub's grip was very persistent, he was determined to not let go of Homestar. Homestar was desperate to get Bubs off him. He felt his life slowly drifting away as he had to full as he had to hold full control of his body. Bubs ripped Homestar's shirt fully off and the sight excited him. He held on to Homestar very tightly, feeling every bit of warmth emanating from Homestar's body. Bubs licked Homestar's cheeks which tasted off great marshmallows. Homestar was moaning for he could not bear any more. 
Bubs tickled Homestar, knowing that his screams of anguish only empowered him more. Homestar kept believing that someone would help him as he screamed and moaned louder than any time he has before. Bubs ripped his shirt off as well as the sweat was building up from all the excitement. He groped Homestar, clenching very sensitively, but Homestar's moans only made his grip tighter. Bubs roared into the ceiling as he yanked his belt off, letting his pants sag to the floor. I'm gonna tear off my shirt and start flexing, Bubs exclaimed proudly, much to the delight of all my lady fans and gentle fans. Do you remember that, Homestar? Bubs began flexing his package, showing it off to Homestar in order to impress him. Homestar was very impressed despite all the negative things that have happened, but was in full awe by the density of it. However, this all faded away as Homestar realized the reality of the situation. He was in imminent danger and Bubs was leaning over ominously. Bubs pounced on Homestar, grabbing him and violently thrusting. Bubs did his work furiously and powerfully with a bat without a break or a cease. Homestar cried in agony as Bubs refused his cries for mercy. This only made Bubs go harder and harder. Crap, 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 Marzipan, Homestar bawled, crying for Marzipan's help, hoping that she is still upstairs, which is an irrational hope as Marzipan surely would have come down by now. She ain't gonna hear you, she on the other side, Bubs replied in a sadistic way. What did you do to her, Homestar yelled in anguish, fearing the worst. Bubs just gave a masochistic smile, and this was a direct signal to Homestar that the worst did happen. He began to cry rivers of tears which splashed into Bubs' package. This excited Bubs, who immediately began to slurp up the tears. Tasty salty, Bubs exclaimed sadistically. He laughed maniacally into the night, and at this point Homestar had lost all track of time. He felt like it was an eternity. Homestar was trying to convince himself that Marzipan was still alive and that Bubs would let him live after the event had occurred on this tragic night. Bubs worked tireless, tirelessly and with full effort, devoting for the penultimate occurrence about to happen. Homestar braced for impact as he too knew what the penultimate consequence was. The floor was soaked with Bubs' sweat and Homestar was covered in sweat also. But in a single period of time, as Bubs hit the climax and let out a blood curling ha 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 into the night, Homestar dripped for he was covered. Homestar, realizing that it was all over, passed out in the liquid. Bubs continued with round two as Homestar's passing out prevented him from any being any resistance. Afterwards, Bubs took a long hot shower for he was sticky and exhausted from the occurrence of the night. After that, he pulled his pants up, but put on the remains of his shirt and walked slyly out of Marzipan's house, letting Homestar be left for dead. However, he did not realize he had left the keys to the handcuffs on the same table which Homestar was handcuffed to. When Homestar awoke, he gazed upon the keys to his handcuffs. Although he was drowsy, he knew that they were his keys to freedom, and sluggishly unlocked himself and proceeded to crawl to the closet household. He knew that now that he had escaped, he can finally bring justice to the tragic day which he had endured. To be continued? Homestar's Tragic Day Part 2 By Salad Dog Homestar gazed at the dark obsidian sky. His eyes were drooped and bruised from Bub's abuse and power. He was crying, his bones ached, and heart sank to the bottom of the ocean. His face was a disgrace, for it was covered in the penultimate occurrence that Bub's had released onto him. He struggled and yelled at the sky, Why has this happened? Why have you done this to me? He collapsed next to the stick, crying and moaning in agony. His mind was filled with thoughts of pom-pom setting things right, but his body was frail and beaten. He woke after he was jabbed in the buttocks. Strong Bad was poking him. Hey, Dumpwad, did you fall into the stupid hole or something? Strong Bad exclaimed. He felt that Homestar had just fallen and hit his face for a long day of running. Homestar let out a solitary tear. He stared at the ground, knowing that he could never explain to Strong Bad what had happened. Homestar let out a melancholy wheeze. His throat was beaten in. Homestar let out a saw. Hold the look. Homestar didn't even acknowledge Strong Bad's insults. No matter what his heart, well, no matter what, his heart was violated and crushed into a throbbing pain, a deep pain so foul, powerful that no matter what Strong Bad threw at him, his heart was still tortured.
Strong Bad felt something in his subconscious. He suddenly believed that Homestar's condition was not because of his willful and clumsy ignorance. He believed that someone had done something to Homestar. Homestar looked opposite of Strong Bad at the back of Bub's concession stand. His eyes clenched with regret and sorrow. I've met the gates of hell and back. They mock me with every inch of their throbbing package, like I'm yesterday's lunch at work. They smile at me with a taste for fresh meat, fresh innocent meat that cries for help. They know what's going to happen. They smirk about it. They think the situation is just one big gag, that everyone will come from behind the curtains and say, You're punked. But in reality, I was really punked. They were still smirking about it. They laugh at the gates of hell, thinking it's nothing more than a vision, and deep vision with a plethora of complex feelings. But it's not. They are the gates of hell. They do not forgive. They do not forgive. They are legion. Homestar spoke in a lost, grisly voice. What the crap happened, man? Strong Bat exclaimed with genuine concern. Homestar turned around, this time with plenty of tears down in face. Please get Pom Pom. Strong Bad looked bad down at the ground. He knew he still had a reputation to live up to, but his heart sank at the thought he wouldn't even, wouldn't even help a person in a critical situation. You stay here. I'll go get Pom Pom. Strong Bad yelled at his, as he ran at his full capacity toward Pom Pom's house. Strong Bad arrived at Pom Pom's house, huffing and puffing from the excruciating exercise. He banged the door with incredible urgency. Pom Pom opened up wearing his thick pink bathrobe with the furious blue wrist strap or waist strap. He was concerned why Strong Bad was bothering him at this time. Home stars in serious trouble, Pom Pom. We need to get to the Gremlin right now. There's no time to waste. Jesus, I better swap out for a nice green lavender bathrobe, Pom Pom exclaimed in a fit of bubbles. There's not enough time. The consequences will never be the same. Hexty. And with that, Strong Bad and Pom Pom were running to his garage while er the Gremlin was parked. They jumped in and buckled tight. Click it or tick it. They sat for at least three minutes. Nothing happened. Crap, do you have the keys? We actually have to drive this now. Pom Pom pulled out the furious blue keys out of the frosted pink bathrobe. Strong Bad slid them in, cranked it, and sped off towards the stick. When they arrived, Homestar was huddled next to the stick, breathing heavily. Pom Pom dashed out of the door, completely wretched at harm Homestar's condition. He held Homestar's hand, telling him everything will be alright. Homestar remained silent. Pom Pom, help me get him into the car. He needs help now, Strong Bad shouted. They worked to gently get Homestar in the back seat, and they sped off to the direction of Bub's concession stand. However, they are unknowingly bringing Homestar directly to the source of his problems. Upon arrival at Bub's concession stand, they found Bub snoozing in his rocking chair, which was behind the counter of his stand. 